Now, this is a big day for Dave Kuchetian and especially for his grandpa, Alf Clausen. Happy 100th birthday. He was born this day in 1915. Wow. What this man has seen in his life. And Hi, Alfred. We wish we could be there with your friends and your family to celebrate 100 years. That's pretty incredible. Is this not the same Alfred that lives at Brimley Lane, Osmond? That's the same Alfred. Is this the Alfred who is Bruce Lane's assistant? <laughs> oh, wait. No, it's not no, that wait. one. No. This is the one who works out every day. He's, yeah, as a matter of fact, he just quit going to the gym a couple years ago. And he still drives. He still drives at 100. Wow. Anyways, we wish we could be there with all your friends and family as you celebrate 100 years. But from all of us, we just want to say, Happy, Happy birthday. birthday! Happy Birthday, dear Alfred! Happy Birthday to you! I'm Alfred Clausen. I grew up in Saskatchewan, a Scandinavian community, and it was Clausen. And I, for 22 years, I was Alfred Clausen. I came to Ontario, and uh, they read it as Clausen, so I've gone along with it. But it still sounds good if I go back and hear it pronounced the way I grew up. And I was born on December the 12th, 1915. I like to tell people that Frank Sinatra and I were twins. We were born the same day, December 12, 1915. But I'm a Johnny One Note. <laughs> <laughs> so I grew up on a farm. My parents were both born in the United States, Minnesota, and came up to Canada in 1905, the year Saskatchewan became a province. And my father then had to build a sod house. I never saw it. They were all gone before I came along. And before he married my mother, he uh, had a frame house built where I was born. So my father died when I was 16. So I was doing the farming from under mother supervision and uh, until I was 22 years of age. And that was in 1938. We'd finished harvest and thrashing. And uh, my cousin Harold Sorderbeck and I rode the freight trains down to Toronto, sightseeing. We went to see Niagara Falls and uh, slept overnight in the jail there. <laughs> and uh, then we went down to Windsor. We thought we'd go across and see Detroit. Of course, they didn't want to let a couple hobos in there, and they sent us back through the tunnel to Canada. We didn't get to Detroit. We were all set to head back to Saskatchewan. And we were going to cross to the south side of Queen Street so we could catch a streetcar down to the Don Valley. That's where we are going to get the, the freight train going home. Standing there waiting for the light to change, and a short, fat Jewish man. He said, have you done any fighting, any boxing? I said, no. Would you like to learn? Sure. So. Joe Lewis was champion. They figured a white guy put up a battle would be a big attraction, so I was going to be the white hope. <laughs> That's why I stayed in Toronto instead of being back on the farm. But it's, it amazes me when I think about how an accident of fate can change your whole life. If that light had changed and he'd been across ahead of me, I wouldn't have met Sam Starr, and I'd been back on the farm. I'm sure I would have been a bachelor like two of my brothers were. Instead, I stayed here in Toronto and started working out in the gym. And uh, oh, and another accident of fate, which uh, was uh, made a big difference in my life. The, the trainer, they had a little Joe Richards, and was my trainer, a little Englishman. They called him the sheriff. Joe went looking around the neighborhood for a place for a room and board. And at 8 Metcalf Street, he saw a Reuben board sign in the window, and I went to board at Cornell's house. Five and a half years later, I married the landlady's daughter, Shirley. So it's, again, how if he hadn't found that place, I wouldn't have met Shirley. 
I'd seen enough of there's a couple punch drunk guys hanging around and I well if this is what happens to boxers I don't want to do this I'm going back to the farm phoned a friend to say goodbye that I was leaving he says why don't you wait till Monday morning I hear they're taking on the help at Lever Brothers so Mrs. Cornell let me unpack and I, Monday morning I went down to Lever Brothers and um, they were looking for a big husky guy strong guy for the bull gang they called it loading and unloading the box cars so when he interviewed me and found out I'd been training for three months in the gym and I was on the farm from the farm used to heavy work he says I want to hire you he says but I can't take you on in front of these guys there were six or eight guys he said they've been coming down every day for weeks come back in an hour so I came back in an hour and worked 40, almost 42 years for Lever Brothers. Yeah, and that's, uh, again, how uh, if I hadn't have phoned this guy and he happened to know about Lever Brothers, I, uh, I'd have been back on the farm. So all these things had to happen that changed my whole life. She, yeah, I yeah. saw her boyfriends <laughs> coming and going. When I came there to board there, she was going with the Jimmy Fraser. She was still a teenager. She was 16 when I came there. I was 22. And she was going with Jimmy Fraser and went with him quite steadily for a while, but then they broke off and she was going with Harry James, same uh, sailor. And he was a real handsome, good-looking sailor. So I wouldn't have had a chance. <laughs> but uh, Shirley got a Dear Shirley letter from uh, Harry James. He had married a girl in Halifax. And that's when I had uh, got a, a look in and it wasn't too long after that we started going together, and uh, I guess it started coming back from Musselman's Lake. Shirley and I were sitting in the back seat of the car, and holding hands, and and that's how we started. And then she gave me a kiss, and it wasn't too long before <laughs> we were engaged to be married. October 22nd. I've got a picture in here of taking the day we were engaged. October 22nd, 1943, and we're married February the 12th, 1944. <laughs> yeah, people keep asking me, what's your secret? I say, I have no secrets, but uh, most of my life I was a great walker, did a lot of walking and exercise. I have a sister who was 100, and two years ago, my aunt Cora, father, sister, died two months after her 113th birthday. So when I tell people that, they say, oh, you got good genes. I said, yeah, my father, her brother, died at 47. My three younger brothers died at 57, 69, and 70. So uh, I don't know why I'm still here, except for that the good die young, they say. <laughs> no. I've always tried to eat healthy food and uh, stayed away from the junk food and sugar and stuff like that. Drink a little wine once in a while with my dinner. I had a little glass last night. I make it at the wine kit store. I enjoy that. And uh, the doctors tell you it's uh, important to be socially active, so I go out to this uh, Burkdale senior community center twice a week. I go Tuesdays and play shuffleboard and I go there every Thursday. I'll be going tomorrow and have a hot meal at noon. But at uh, Burkdale after dinner, most of them are playing bingo, but I don't care for bingo. So I've got some guys, uh, two of them we taught to play uh, cribbage and I bring my cribbage board and we play cribbage. I've got the mat on the floor here and two eight pound dumbbells. First thing I do in the morning I lay down the mat and get up and up on my shoulders and bicycle up and, uh, and uh, do that for to a count of about a hundred. And I don't know what that is supposed to do but in my layman's mind I figure it gets the blood going down in your head and your brain and keeps <laughs> keeps it from getting Alzheimer's so <laughs> So I do that, and then I lay on the floor and lift the two of them up a hundred times. They're 1,600 pounds. I lift there and do 50 this way. And uh, this butterfly, I'll do 25 or 30 like that and lay and raise my both feet up. 
legs up. And uh, that's good for the abdominal muscles. 